actually live so they can hear what you are saying and what you are talking about. We will uh, be, you know what, very shortly, sir, we will uh, cut to the camera. But right now they are watching the intro. They are watching the intro. Watching the intro, watching the intro. Actually, I don't have a... Go to the Maze Jackson page and click videos. It should be. Well, should. I'm doing a watch party. Oh. Now that I don't know. Okay, but we got nine. All right. I can't call That is our monitor, so that's what people are seeing on the screen. Okay. There's a delay, so there's probably about a minute delay, so I'm trying to let us come live before I go. What's up, Chicago? This is your man, Maze Jackson, live, live, live at the Intelligence Group, and you are now here for the first of a series of interviews with the What's In It For The Black People endorsed candidates. That's right. There wasn't for the black people endorsed candidates. Now, let me tell you all, there are really three big races that I care about. Three big races that I care about. And the order is going to be a little out for most people because you're going to probably be like, what the what? The first race that's most important to me because y'all know if I want to go to sleep every night, I got to make sure that my wife's team wins. So I want to encourage you all to make sure that you vote for Kimberly Neely Dubu Clay. She will be receiving the What's in it for the Black People endorsement from the for the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, as well as Commissioner Frank Avila. I need you to vote for those two. Also, don't forget my girl, Era Sepulveda, as well as Mayor Dion Dean. Now, y'all got to figure that out. You got to turn that volume down. Uh, get now, y'all got to figure that out be, be, between yourselves. I'm not gonna tell you the other two, but I tell you what you gotta do. You gotta support Kimberly Neely Dubu Clay, and you gotta support Frank Abla. Now, the next race that I'm gonna tell you, uh, we have spent the last four years going over uh, everything that has been going on in the city, county state has revolved around criminal justice reform, whether they're talking about cannabis, whether they're talking about expungements, it all revolves, or whether it's about Laquan McDonald, Kim Fox, Kim Fox, Kim Fox, Kim Fox. It is important that we all come together and support Kim Fox. Now, the people I'm telling you are going to be also this weekend, you'll be seeing them being endorsed, but it is important that every single voter turn out for Kim Fox for state's attorney. Uh, the fix is in, y'all. The fix is in. We've seen it. We know it. But now I'm 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 here today, though. And you know, I, I told you I did that in reverse, right? So I'm here today because I want to reintroduce to some of you and introduce to some of you one of the very few black elected officials, in my estimation, that is willing to not only answer the question, what's in it for the black people, but stand up and put his money where his mouth is. Now, before I go on, I'm gonna take a... <laughs> ah, refreshing drink, not, Snapple is not a sponsor. Snapple is not a sponsor, I wanna be clear. But if you know me, you know I love Snapple. 
love Snapple. And this right here is a 32 ounce Snapple, <laughs> which would have probably cost me about another $3.20 based on if it wasn't for this man. You know, when everybody else said yes, yes, yes to the pop tax, he was the only per as every politician said yes, yes, yes to the pop tax. And the people were like, no, there was only one person, one person that was willing to stand up and go to the mat for the black folks. This Commissioner Boykin. Let me tell you, though. Commissioner Boykin paid the price for fighting for you. He paid the price because, you know what, let me, now let's be clear. He took on the Democratic Party machine establishment, but he also took on a billionaire and won. If that wasn't enough, when we started asking the question, what's in it for the black people? It was Commissioner Boykin who pointed out that there was zero, zero, uh, nada, zilch, zippo in black contracts at the Cook County Health and Hospital System. And when I asked others what could be done, they were like, well, it's not on me. It's not my responsibility. I can't do anything. You know, now, ladies, there's things that he's done for you too, but you know how fellas do. I, I don't really want to talk about that, but I'm going to tell you. He's been a champion for women as well. Now, I'm going to tell you. He's a graduate of CVS High School. One of the cleanest, sharpest dressing brothers. Ah, come on. I'm going to tell you. He speaks well. You know, he, he's got that way about himself. <laughs> he makes you feel like, I think that I know. You know that when you're talking to this brother, you know he's going to represent us well. Um, but I'm going to tell you all, this is one of the most important positions in the county. Let me tell you, there's more. there are more $70,000 and up a year jobs at the clerk of the circuit court's um, office than any other department in the state. It's why so many people want to stop him from achieving this spot. Now, this was a spot that many of you are familiar with, Dorothy Brown. Dorothy Brown held down that spot for almost, was it 20 years? Yes. And so I think we were so used to voting for her that if she's not on the ballot, people probably won't even recognize or even think. Well, I can't say that because this brother's been working hard to make sure his name is some of everywhere. But I think that it is important for us, look, black folks, we have a chance to send a message to the Democratic Party. We have a chance to send a message to black people that we can be unified, that white folks don't pick our leaders. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, this is the what's in it for the black people endorsement session, right? So I don't say all the politically correct stuff. I ain't talking to everybody. I'm talking specifically to black people. People. Now, you white folks tuning in, because I know y'all be t tuning in and telling. Y'all be like, ooh, I was talking. You hear that daggone Maze Jackson? He was talking. That's right. Because I, I, I say what other people won't say. And so I'm going to tell you what. Over the next 19 days, there are going to be black people, black people, telling you that in a race with only one black person, that you should be considering someone else. Well, I'm here to tell you that we at What's In It For The Black People are proud, proud, proud to endorse for the clerk of the circuit court, the most qualified candidate. Now, you know I don't really like the whole qualified thing because, you know, white folks say qualified. That just mean a way to get black folks out. But this brother, man, I ain't going to hold it against him. Did I tell you I wanted to go to CVS at one point? <laughs> I did, I did, I did. I used to want to go to CVS when I lived in the city and then I found out about Bolingbrook. But he graduated from CVS. He went on to school in Ohio at Central State. Central State. University. Now you were not there causing that. You were not there in the riots, was you? No. Okay. Okay. No, I was after the riots. No, you was a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Then <laughs> he graduated from college. Went on to law school. Went on from law school to become the chief of staff for the Voice of God, Danny <laughs> K. Davis. And then after that, you know what he did? What most black people don't have a chance to do. He was able to put his law degree together with his experience in government to become one of the top black lobbyists in the country. But it wasn't enough for him. 
He said, you know, I'm going to put that to the side. And I'm going to come on back and I'm going to serve my community ran to be Cook County Commissioner. Where he was the most vociferous advocate for black people, regardless of what people would tell you. Because you know you got that voice, man. You talk that way. And sometimes black people don't understand that you have been fighting for us and been on the front lines since, since you got to the game. And what I love about Commissioner Boykin, excuse me. How do I do that as commissioner? Attorney Boykin. Let me do it. Let me do it right. Attorney Boykin. What I love about Attorney Boykin is that he understands the nuance of politics. He understands what's good for us and his people and his constituents, regardless of the party. And he's willing to put his money where his mouth is. Now, as if I could do no more, if I couldn't say any more, I could tell you this. As we passed around the uh, review, the, the applications, and you know, people sent in their applications, but there was one application in this race that made sense. And so we already knew what we was going to do. It's like it felt good to finally be in a place where the fix was in for the black folks. But then when we saw his questionnaire, it was like, dang, we couldn't even fix it because he was the best candidate. So I'm gonna ask you to do us a favor really quickly. I'm gonna I, I, I think I wound it up good enough. I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna welcome you to the What's in it for the Black People endorsement session as our first endorsed candidate, Cook County well, it's not Cook County Commissioner. It is soon it's attorney and soon to be clerk of the circuit court, Richard Boykin. Welcome to our endorsement session. How are you, brother? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. I want to thank your listening audience as well. This thank is our you. viewing audience. Thank you for your viewing <laughs> audience. And thank you for all that you do to make sure that um, African Americans, black folks are represented uh, here in Cook County and around the country. I think the work that you do is just cutting edge. I want to be clerk of the Circuit Court of Cook County because it is the front door to our justice system. It really is the way that folks can access justice. And we got to make sure that that front door is wide open, welcoming, and free of political influence. Cook County has the second largest combined court system in the United States of America. We have the busiest court system in the world. And we must make sure that that court system remains in the hands of the people and not a political party. Last time I looked, uh, they didn't check and see whether or not you were of it for specific political party and then service you at our court system. The court system services everybody. The clerk's office is one of the judicial stakeholders and has a major role to play in terms of uh, criminal justice reform. When I was on the county board, we did a lot around restorative justice. I actually directed millions of dollars in restorative justice grants. There's going to be a restorative justice court in Austin very soon. I started the work there, and of course, uh, uh, we're waiting to, to, to see that happen. But I want to continue this work uh, of automatic expungement. I, I released a plan for that. And this is one of the things that uh, sets me apart from my opponents. I think that the clerk's office has the ability to help restore people's lives. In terms of automatic expungement, my idea is this. If a person's arrested, and that person's charges are dropped by the state's attorney or dismissed by a judge. I believe that the clerk's office ought to move after 120 days to expunge that person's record. Wait a minute. I got to stop you there. <laughs> I got to stop you there because you know what? It's interesting that you bring this up. So in a different life, I was a little, I had, I was a nefarious character at times. Okay. Now, fortunately... For most of the times, I only got arrested. Not, I only got arrested. And so they didn't, I didn't have charges. But just here recently, I was going to volunteer to give back to some young people. And it came back. They did a report. And it came back and it said that I had been arrested. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't get charged. I mean, I walked out. And they were like, I'm sorry, sir. You and I was like, but wait. I didn't get charged. I'm not guilty. And it essentially made me guilty because I lost the opportunity. And I actually was trying to give back. I really wasn't trying to earn any money. But they told me I could not volunteer with the young people because 
I had been arrested. And I was like, dang, what I, what I got to do to fix that? Can you imagine the person arrested for shoplifting, charges dropped, and then that person goes to try to apply to become a teller at a bank or something, and then they do a background check and it comes up. And in our system in Cook County, it doesn't say that the charges have been dropped. It looks like it's pending. That's still. that that so, that happened to me, and I'm telling you, when that happened to me, I was. And then I'm gonna tell you what I did. I tapped out. Like the sure. people were like, "Well, this is the next step you need to do, and this is the next thing you do." And I was like. I didn't do anything. I beat the case. I mean, I didn't beat the case. I didn't even get charged. They let me go home, and now I can't volunteer. And you know what I said? What I bet, and, and I have time, and I got a little money too. And you know what I said? Bust it all. I'm not volunteering, and I ain't spending no time trying to fix this stuff. I'm just going about my life. But you have to get it fixed because here's why. It's holding so many people back. In the county last year, 379,000 people were arrested. Of that 379,000, 246,000 were black folks. 246. And then for white folks, what they did is they combined the white folks and the Latinos together, and it was about 89,000 of them arrested. But you don't know how many white, how many Latinos. See, they, but they see, they be ch- after one so, generation. Oh, I'm not going to so, tell you. But, but, but 246,000 of that 379,000 were black folks. That's a problem. The clerk's office, the court system has become sort of the new Jim Crow, much like Michelle Alexander's book in terms of, you know, the mass uh, prison industrial complex. Uh, the clerk's office with these fees and fines and all of that and this, uh, these arrests have caused severe harm to people's lives. So what I've said is this, an individual doesn't have to get legislation passed in Springfield. The chief judge can issue what we call an administrative general order to all of the judges and say, in cases where charges have been dropped or dismissed by judges, after 120 days, the clerk's office can move to affirmatively uh, drop, uh, you know, have automatic expungement in that case. And the reason why it's important, we've, we've encountered so many people who just by being arrested, they can't get jobs, they can't get public housing or private housing because they do background checks, and they can't get federal loans for education. Let me tell you. So, remember I told you I had like a nefarious background? Right. So I was trying to clean up, like trying to get myself together and what I've kept doing every time I would apply for a job before I would have something that would come up. And so I just stopped applying for jobs. Now I became an entrepreneur. Now the entrepreneur that I evolved, but when I started realizing that I couldn't get a job because of this, because of what had happened, it pushed me back towards my nefarious ways Mm -hmm. until I realized that I wasn't built for prison. Right. Right. And so, see, I believe that automatic expungement will, in fact, help to reduce crime. Because I think if people don't have that on their record, I believe that they'll have an opportunity to get these jobs and they'll become meaningful uh, citizens in our society. Uh, One of the other things that's important with the clerk's office is the technology. You know, you're technology savvy because you've set up all of this. Well, we want to move the clerk's office into the 21st century in a big way. We want to have what we call uh, the e-record be the official record of the court. I want to move the court system to a paperless-based system at the end of my first term. I want to make sure that we have remote access to documents, not just for parties to a lawsuit, but for everybody. If they want to access a public document, I don't think that they should have to come down to the Daily Center or Maybrook or Skokie or anywhere, one of our courthouses, to get it. They should be able to access that document from their office or from their home and print it out right there. I also want to save people from having to come down to pay tickets and that sort of thing. I want them to be able to do it from their smartphones. So we want to move the uh, office forward in terms of technology. We think it's vitally important. We also want to make sure that we have access for folks who are disabled uh, because we think that that's important that they be able to access justice as well. And so... We're excited about the plans that we have. One of my other major initiatives is to forgive fees and and get judges to waive fines of debt that's maybe five years and older. Uh, Look, and and to assess people's fees and fines on a sliding scale basis. 
on a person's ability to pay. I think the governor did a good thing a few months ago when he signed a bill that says we're not going to suspend people's licenses because they can't afford to pay the fees and fines on their tickets. Um, we were suspending 50,000 people's licenses a year in the state of Illinois. If a person has a CDL and they drive trucks for a living or they drive taxi cabs or Uber or Lyft and that person has to pay child support payments, if we suspend their license then basically we take away their ability to earn money and then we put another uh, impediment on them because they can't make their child support payments and so then they wind up having to file bankruptcy. I'd wipe that debt out altogether. You know what, Commissioner? Uh, and you know, I keep calling you Commissioner, but I think I need to start calling you Clerk, right? Yes. Is that what I need to do? Yes. I'm going to start calling you Clerk. Now, Clerk! Yes. Now, see, here's the challenge now. I'm going to tell you, Mr. Clerk. What happens for us is we get, in these, we get our people into these spots, and then they forget. You get fancy, man, because you know you're going to have the biggest, one of the biggest court systems in the world. And then you're going to get too busy for the black people. And the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to get one of these chiefs of staff from somebody else. And then the next thing we know, it's going to be like, man, well, you forgot about the black people. How, we, how do we know we can count on you to not forget us once we get you elected? Well, I think uh, I have a track record of always following my conscience and putting people above politics. And, and especially uh, making sure that I represent the black community and black folks in general in a way that they can be proud of. I mean, when you talk about uh, getting rid of the, uh, the the sweetened beverage tax or soda pop tax. Did I mention I... how great this Snapple tastes? <laughs> and it tastes so much better, 32 cents less. But I'll move yes. on. And when you talk about getting rid of the tax on feminine hygiene products that we did for women. Carrie, I'm not going to the store. I'm not buying those. She always trying to get me to go to the store to get this. I'll be like, look. <laughs> Hi, I'm not going, to, but I'll go ahead. I appreciate that for the brothers out there. Go or ahead. when you talk about raising issues about uh, the lack of contracting and professional services at our health and hospital system. I mean, these are issues that, uh, that I'll always raise because I think it's important. Look, I'm going to stay focused and grounded, and people like you will keep me grounded. Look, the clerk's office is a bevy of data, but one thing that people will always know is that we're going to have uh, transparency accountability and integrity and the reality of it is is that when I was a county commissioner I did a weekly report to my constituents as a clerk at a circuit court I'm going to do a quarterly report on how many cases were were filed in the court system how their tax dollars are being utilized and we're going to be an open book for people to see I want people to understand what it is that uh, that the clerk's office does we're going to have an initiative with the Chicago Public Schools in the city colleges of Chicago where we actually go out and we talk about the role of the clerk in our justice system and I'll do that in concert with the chief judge we'll take a judge out and a clerk and we'll talk about uh, you know the court system too often African Americans especially African American males uh, our first encounter with the court system is when we get arrested and we have to go to court I want people to understand what the court system does before you get there the clerk's office does a lot I mean, if you have to file a lawsuit, you have to go through the clerk's office. If you need a will or a probate in a state, you got to do it through the clerk's office. If somebody's in an abusive relationship, they need an order of protection. Got to get it through the clerk's office. So the clerk's office is right there in the, the, the intersection between justice. You know what? So I'm going to be honest with you. You said all that good stuff, and it's all fancy, and it's all. And so, for all of the policy people out there, I hope that all of that worked for you. I hope all of that worked for you for all the policy people. And I'm going to tell you, I'm looking at you on Facebook Live, and people are like loving it the whole thing. But I'm going to tell you, I am about the acts using politics to create power for our community. Um, as the clerk of the circuit court, you will control jobs. You will control contracts. You will have a massive operation of people. And I believe that if properly exercised, the clerk of the circuit court can become a political hammer mm -hmm. for black people. Now, right. I believe 
that having seen how you know how to see you, you know how to talk, you got that smooth voice, <laughs> that smooth jazz, you know, that ha ha ha. And so you know how to get and the white folks are gonna feel comfortable, right? And I and I say that because let me tell you, one of the things that we're seeing right now is that white folks, they they they'll give you a chance, but if you get they got one reason to get you to throw you over the board, they would throw you overboard. So I, I, I understand and I, I really don't want to jam you in that space because I, I know you got to get votes everywhere. But I want to know if you are the clerk of the circuit court, can we count on you to be a vociferous advocate for black issues? And can you wield the power that you have in the clerk's office? Because I'm going to tell you, you got a lot of the big willies people working there that... So when the speaker call you up and say, uh, fire all the black people. <laughs> and I'll, uh, you know what, let me, let me not jam you because what I don't want to, here's what, it's the most important thing is for you to win. So I don't want to jam you up in the process of the win. But what I do want to be clear is that I understand politics. Yeah. And, and I understand the power that is in that office if the person in that office understands the power. So I got two things. I want to make sure that what's in it for the black people because we're fighting for black people all the time. We're going to be knocking on your door. We want to be trying to give you some of the resumes for some of the best people. But we also want you to not sit by and watch things happen. Right now, we're sitting, our leadership, even with the power that they have, with the people, the employees, no one fears black people. No one fears what the, re, the, the consequence of disrespecting us. And all I would ask is that um, as a black man, because I'm going to tell you right now, just real talk, they, we can get a lot of black women elected, but black women in a lot of cases are put in a jam by men, and so they get along. So as one of the few black men that would be elected to that space, we got some demands and some expectations from you. You think you can handle that? No question about it. I mean, look, um, I'll just say this, that when it wasn't popular to demand justice for Laquan McDonald. I was out there marching around City Hall and demanding justice, uh, marching down Michigan Avenue with uh, a lot of the activist community demanding justice for Laquan McDonald. But even before that, I mean, when I was working on Capitol Hill and working for the Congressional Black Caucus, I actually was appointed as the chief staff person for our police misconduct uh, task force where we went around the country but trying to figure out solutions to police misconduct in so many of our African-American communities. And I was proud to do that. So I, I have a history of standing up for our community, and I'll continue to do that. And I'll make sure of this, that the clerk's office reflects the great diversity of our county. Okay. You, now, let me just tell you, and I must just say this, because, you know, this whole diversity of our county these trickery words. It's this trickery. It's like, I ain't trying to hear no people. You do people of color, but when you come over here, I don't care about diversity. That's Your job is to manage the diversity, but when you come to us, we don't want to talk. When you go to the Indian group, they don't be like, what's going on with the black people? So when you come to black folks, we want to know what the answers are for black folks. And I'm going to tell you, I have confidence that you'll do it because even as people are still dancing around trying to figure out the answers to the questions that you asked years ago, you haven't stopped. You know what? I, I'm going to tell you. When I saw, the, re I watched your Cook County Commissioner race. And I'm, I'm going to just say this to the audience. And I rem it, it, your race coincided with the beginning of the WVON morning show. Quite frankly, your race... I mean, that, that race and the pop tax was really part of what launched the popularity because that is where Queen Sugar was birthed, right? right? And it right. became one of the, and it became, it still lasts to this day. And I watched as the results came in. And when you lost... I was like, shame on black people. I was. Shame on black people. Shout out to my man, Anthony Beckham, right? <laughs> Shout out to my man, Anthony Beckham. He worked hard. Man. And 
he really convinced me about you, right? Because, you know, I come from a place where they're like, ah, oh, y'all over there, and I'm over here. But over time, we started to build. And, you know, I, I'm a little difficult at times, you know, and I can go in and I can go out and I can be with you and not with you. But you've always been consistent, right? Like, people have always tried to portray you as inconsistent. But the fact of the matter is, you've been consistent with our community. And I, I want to be clear about that. But I feel like black people owe you a debt of gratitude. Now we, we, we owe, winning this election is for ourselves. So it's in our self-interest. But I also think, I also think that when nobody, and I, I, I want to be clear, when nobody would stand up to the pop tax, and I talked to every damn commission, black commission on that board, and they all was like, I, don't, I hate this thing, but I got to do it. I was like, but your constituents don't want it. He was like, but I got to do it. Because the answer was to be with the politicians, not the people. You took the people and you paid a price for it. They raised money. They raised millions of dollars for no other reason than to whoop the brother who stood with his community. To whoop the brother who stood with his community over the interests of freaking Mike Bloomberg in New York. If you are looking for someone who will have our back, who will represent us in a way, everybody don't know. You know, I get loud. I get to catch the Holy Ghost. Some people curse you out. Some people are lawyers. Some people are skilled negotiators. Some people don't ever talk lower than this so that you have to focus <laughs> really tight on what they're saying. This brother has worked in Congress. This brother has worked at the county level. He's worked locally. Uh, and then he's gone on and done well for himself. It is now time for us to do well for ourselves. You all saw today. And I'm and now this is a wall. He doesn't have anything to do with this because this I'm about to get some people in trouble. We found out today that the chairman of the Democratic Party of Illinois is not a partner with the black community in criminal justice reform. He found that out. We saw it in writing. We saw it in print. We heard it before, but we saw it today. So we got to make sure that we have allies in the space. Um, I'm going to tell you something, Commissioner, real quick, and I want to get this out because I know people are going to throw this out there as they try to, as, as you start to surge and as black people start to wake up. One of the things that I've heard from black Democrats is that you are not supporting Kim Fox. I've heard from black Democrats that you are against Kim Fox. I've heard from black Democrats that we need to elect the white guy because you would try to hurt Kim Fox. It seems to me like you would be a partner with Kim Fox in criminal justice reform. So if we had a Supreme Court justice, the attorney general, the state's attorney, and the clerk of the circuit court, damn, it seemed like, and the chief judge, it seemed like we got, what you call that, a monopoly, right. a trifecta? Right. Are you, is there any truth to that rumor? No truth at all. Look, these uh, folks who are spreading that, they're dangerous people. They're malicious people. They don't have the interests of our community at heart. They want to distract and distort uh, from the real issue. And the real issue is, is that they'd like for uh, Mike Madigan to control the jobs at the clerk's office. There are 1,400 positions there, and they'd like to control those positions. Now, the first thing that, uh, that uh, the slated candidate would do is he would get rid of uh, all of the people at wheel uh, who, you know, about 300 of them there out of the 1,400 and he would replace them with white folks. I mean, because... You know, white folks that don't like black folks. But right. I, I, I say and, that and, you did and, and let me say this, that, you know, prior to Clerk Dorothy Brown uh, being at the clerk's office as the clerk, there were few, very few black folks who worked there. And so she opened it up. I mean, and I'm glad she opened it up. And I want to keep it open. And so those people who are going around saying that, they're wrong. So you can count on you supporting Kim Fox? Yes. There it is. So look, let me you, you heard it. 
Right there. You ain't the, so don't come to me with the he said, she said, bull, none of that. Look, y'all, we got a job to do. We are in one of the most unique opportunities ever. I'm telling you, I feel like the stars are aligning right now. Even as the other people work against candidates in our space, it is that working against them that is going to bring us together. Now, I'm going to tell y'all what. There's four candidates in the race. Four candidates in the race for clerk of the circuit court. But it's only one black candidate. One. In what? The largest black county in the country. Right? We always talk about reverse history. You know, history of the first black woman and all that good stuff. How about this one? How about we start some history and elect the first black man as the clerk of the circuit court? Not a black man that don't, because it's going to be women. I mean, because he had a, I mean, I just need to say this. I mean, he's a brother who had a bill to give women tampons. Most dudes wouldn't even touch that, right. literally. So, understanding that, we know that the brother is on the team for all of us. But how about one time we all say together, in the re and I'm not saying one time because we've done it before. Let's do it again. Let's do it again and again and again. Hey, y'all, it is our candidate. And I'm proud to tell you all, right? So you begin your voter's guide. When you get the voter's guide, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a bunch of voters. When you show up to the polling place, it's going to be 30 different people trying to hand you stuff, right? They're going to be like, man, I'm down with you. It's going to be people you ain't never seen, you ain't never heard. I want you to do, do me a favor. You see this logo right here? What's in it for the black people? And there'll be a red, black, and green one. With a big old circle on it. Take that one and go into the bo to the voting booth. Take that one and go into the polling place. I'm going to so show you a picture of it real quick. So if you're watching right now, when you see that, pick that up. Take that into the polling place. Now let me tell you one more thing, guys. Election day, early voting and election day is coming. And every one of our campaigns is going to need resources. Now we aren't going to have the economic resources even though... You see them suits this dude, man, over here. I'm looking. I'm, what kind of shoes are those, man? I'm looking at See, he's fresh, man. I look at them glasses. So, you know, he got some money. But one of the things we have to do is we have to be involved. So I'm going to tell you, we as What's Enough for the Black People, we're going to be involved in the race. We're asking people to give us an hour. Give us two hours. Can you send out an email? Can you vote? Can you share the voter's guide? Because, again, right now, the black political infrastructure in Illinois is almost gone. If it isn't gone. Quite frankly, I tell you, the only people who's got some real operations, I don't even want to say their names right now. But what I am going to say is that we can do this. We can elect Kim Fox. We can elect Richard Boykin. We can elect Scott P. Scott Neville. And we can run the gamut of the whole entire court system. Now, if we don't stick together, if we listen to the paid influencers who are paid to influence and disperse our vote and spread us and get us fighting amongst each other then we have a chance to lose it all but I'm an optimist so I think we're going to win it all uh, Attorney Boykin yes. I'm going to give you the opportunity to close well thank you very much uh, Mace for having me on the show and I'm honored to be on the show I'm asking we have 19 days to go I'm asking you to volunteer with our campaign, come make some phone calls, but most of all, I'm asking you for your vote. I'm asking you to trust me that, that I will do the job that you will require in that office. Look, I stand on integrity. I'm for accountability and transparency, but most of all, I'm for fighting for those who've been left out of our system, the most vulnerable. Our court system is really made up of mainly African Americans. When you look at who's paying the fees and who's paying the fines on tickets, when you look at who's getting arrested and who's coming through those doors, it's mainly African Americans. We need somebody in that job who's compassionate, who understands your struggle. And growing up in Inglewood, where I grew up, we were on food stamps. I understand your struggle. 
and I will do right by you. I need your help on election day. I'm Richard Boykin. Punch 147 before you go to heaven. Thank you. Uh-oh, he said, he, look, he, he had an alliteration there, y'all. He had an alliteration. All right, so, uh, Attorney Boykin, before I go, what I try to do is I try to acknowledge the people who tune in because the people that tune in are the people that make us go, right? right. So I want to say some real quicks. Shout out to Kathy Wiley. Shout out to Daryl Wallace. Ooh, hold on. Here, let me get us both in that shot. There we go. All right. Shout out to Daryl Wallace. Shout out to Tiger Lily, always on the team. Leah Charrier. Leah, you know we can't do it without you. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, Leah. You Now, Leah is the ultimate volunteer. You might need to get Leah on the team. Uh, shout out to Michelle Harris. That's not the alderman. Shout out to Rochelle Gardner. What's up to Brother Pata? What's up with Donald Buster Woods? Buster, what's up, man? Uh, you're going to have to play that Hammond organ at the victory party. Um, hey, what kind of food you going to have at the victory party, by the way? I'm not handling that. All right, I'm Somebody just telling y'all, I better be. That. We want some good food. Don't come with that vegan stuff, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, I came to a party, and they was having vegan pizza. We was like, we ain't messing with this. All right, shout out to Mark Allen and Black Wall Street. Thank you for sharing. Shout out to Don Dietrich Robinson. What up, Jeff Mullins? Rochelle Gardner, Tom Watson. Tom, y'all need to get on board with that. Y'all need to team up Felicia with Richard Boykin out in the second sub, right? Y'all could be, y'all could work together. I'm just telling y'all, y'all got to learn how to put this thing together. All right. Uh, Desmond, what's up, my brethren? And Liz Vinson, Felicia Lucas Miles, what's up, cousin? All right, y'all. This is your man, Maze Jackson. This has been the very first of the What's In It for the Black People endorsement sessions. Let me tell you, we need you all to get behind Attorney Richard Boykin. Did you hear that? Attorney Richard Boykin. See, it all worked together. So when white folks come tell you about qualified and all that stuff, when the black folks come and tell you about, you heard him say he voting for Kim Fox, let's put them all in and let's make a bunch of people mad. And a bunch of black people glad. All right. I'm your man, Maze Jackson, every day asking the question, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can tell them, Maze said, I'm out of here. Peace.